Over the years, I've been bombarded with pushback because I supposedly ignore the living soil. They say hydroponic foods lack the vitamins and nutrients we need because the soil is alive and synthetic fertilizers are not. By the end of this video, I will prove that wrong and maybe have you looking not only at gardening, but also at all of life in a different way. First of all, we must agree that they are referring to the romantic idea of gardening. Tilling the earth, walking barefoot through the plants, getting your hands dirty, pruning, basking in the sun while classical music plays in the background. I'm assuming they are not referring to modern day agriculture, even though that is where a majority of us get most of our food. They say hydroponics is not natural. It's not the way God or Mother Nature intended it to be. Because hydroponics leaves out the soil, it has become an unholy beast. Surely they cannot be thinking modern day agriculture to feed the masses is natural. In the vast expanse of the farmer's domain, a curious and formidable creature roams, a leviathan of human invention known as modern farming equipment. Take for example, the tractor. See how it lumbers forth its iron skin gleaming under the midday sun. The beast is adorned with colossal wheels and metal discs like claws of a titan. These discs churn the earth effortlessly, turning soft soil into fertile terrain as if carving its mark upon the landscape. Its growl is unmistakable. A low guttural roar reverberating across the fields. This sound is its lifeblood, a rhythmic cacophony powered by an internal combustion engine, a heart of fire and steel. The creature snorts black plumes of smoke into the air, a warning to all that this is its territory, its domain. Taking fuel that was produced over millions of years and burning, churning, and turning it into residue that pollutes not only the air, but also the life-giving plants that it tends. Observe its maw. A fearsome array of metallic teeth that rake through the earth, devouring weeds, tearing roots, and churning the soil in its relentless path. Behind it, the land lies transformed, as if the monster has fed and left only the bare bones of earth exposed. A bare landscape that is susceptible to wind and erosion, leaving farmers losing topsoils at a rate never before seen in human history. Yet, despite its raw power, there is an unmistakable purpose to its fury. It's not a creature of chaos, but one of utility. A servant to the human species, taming the wild earth to sow life. And so the Iron Giant continues its march, a reminder of humanity's ingenuity and, and the primal forces we've harnessed to bend nature to our will. It is a monster, yes, but one that works for what we refer to as the greater good. The only way mankind has found to keep up with the nutritional needs of an exploding population. Most agree the monster is necessary, but I believe it is far from natural. And in the quiet of the countryside, another kind of beast emerges. An imposing metal predator armed with a curious arsenal. Not the sharp harrow of this, no. This is the sprayer tractor. A creature of industry and precision. And its mission is both striking and controversial. Observe it as it prowls the field, its towering arms unfurled like the outstretched wings of a great bird of prey. From these appendages, a misty vapor is released, a strange and shimmering haze that cloaks the land in its path. The air carries the faint tang of chemicals, the signature of this creature's potent work. A risk to those who use it, those who consume the food it grows, and the entire ecosystem around it. Runoff escapes to waterways and wreaks havoc on all inhabitants for miles and miles. Its roar is steady and purposeful as the machine glides methodically over the crops, covering every inch of terrain with a blanket of synthetic rain. Tiny nozzles, akin to the fangs of a serpent, release this concoction in a delicate yet relentless spray. Each droplet is designed to combat unseen adversaries of the crop world, pests, fungi, and weeds that threaten to undo months of labor. 
but beneath this efficiency lies an air of foreboding. This mechanical monster is a double-edged sword. While it shields the farmer's livelihood, protecting yields from harm, its work comes at a cost. These chemicals, though precise, do not discriminate. The soil beneath the tractor's path may harden, and the air may thicken. The surrounding ecosystem, birds, insects, earthworms, and such, may all falter under its synthetic barrage. And yet, this is the paradox of the modern farm. The sprayer tractor is both hero and villain, a creature that thrives in a blurred boundary between necessity and consequence. As the sun sets on the horizon, the beast finishes its work and retreats, leaving behind fields bathed in a chemical mist. The crops may flourish, but the silent witnesses of the field, the insects, the soil, waterways, they all hold their breath, awaiting the outcome of this unnatural intervention. This is what some call natural, a far cry from thousands of years of farming, a potential risk to everyone involved, and a behemoth of a problem so big we feel there is no other way to do it. They also say hydroponics is unnatural because it replaces the living soil with plastic containers, tubes, and pipes. While not defending the plastic industry, I feel transparency is necessary. A lot of modern farming, not all, involves some type of plastic use. Most notable are nursery trays, pots, and irrigation. A majority of chemical-filled tanks and tubing used for spraying is made of plastic. There is also a hidden demon, the secret we don't like to talk about. While the massive presence and the thunderous roar of the tractor is hard to ignore, plastic sheet mulch is quietly tucked away. Tiny holes are made to let plants grow through, while the petroleum-based sheet blankets the soil, heats it up, kills weeds, and protects against some pests. Most people have used a little landscape fabric in their personal yard or garden, but the commercial farm uses miles and miles of it. In addition, the plastic sheet inadvertently shields the soil from rain, so irrigation, again made of plastic, must be added to provide much needed water to the plants. Each harvest, all of the plastic and irrigation must be removed. Most of it is discarded or incinerated making it one of the largest contributors to plastic waste. Biodegradable sheet mulch is available, but it comes at a higher cost and it's not as durable. With most farms running razor thin margins, it's a tough decision to make. Now here's the twist you probably didn't see coming. What about organic farms? A lot of commercial organic farms, not small family ones or the homestead on the outskirts of town, have opted to use plastic sheet mulch. With the use of commercial pesticides being undesirable as well as prohibited in organic farming, they turn to plastic sheet mulch to keep the plants separated from the soil where a lot of the pests come from. Oddly enough, at least here in America, biodegradable sheet mulch is not allowed on an organic farm. Here it states at this time no biodegradable mulch is allowed for use on organic farms None of the commercially available biodegradable mulches have been proven to meet the requirements of the National Organic Standards. It also says that plastic mulches and covers may be used, provided they are removed from the field at the end of the growing season, and they are petroleum-based, not polyvinyl chloride or PVC. Furthermore, organic farmers can use plastic irrigation, even though there are concerns. So modern farming is not the wonderful dance between man and nature that we envision it to be. There are many topics we could talk about on how we have mutated the symbiotic relationship with the life force of the planet, but for now, let's get back to the living soil. I started by saying there is no such thing. It's a myth. Here's my point, and it's okay if you don't agree. The soil is not alive. The soil has live things in it. When weevils get into the flower, we don't say the flower is alive. We say there are bugs in the flower. By personifying the soil as a living organism, we diminish the universe of life that is actually happening in it. A lot of people make it out like the soil is rich with nutrients that humans need, 
and the plants act like a straw, drawing it up for us to feast on. If it were as simple as that, we could just eat soil. So let's take a closer look, not at the living soil, but rather the vast and intertwined ecology within it. Beneath our feet lies a world so intricate, so teeming with life, that it rivals the most vibrant ecosystems on Earth. This, the soil food web, as described by Dr. Elaine Ingham, is a testament to nature's extraordinary ingenuity. As we dig deeper, literally, we uncover a bustling metropolis hidden within the soil. It begins with the most humble of residents, bacteria and fungi, microscopic architects of the subterranean realm. These organisms break down organic matter transforming dead plants and animals into rich nutrients. It's a process that fuels the very foundation of life above. It does not just stop at organic matter, as we see in the compost piles. They also work their magic on sand, rock, and silt. While most view the creation of a healthy soil that happens in a few months with some decaying lettuce and a couple of worms, the reality is the process has been going on for thousands even millions of years. But this is just the beginning of the story. Enter the predators, nematodes and protozoa. These tiny creatures consume bacteria and fungi, releasing nutrients into forms readily available for plant roots to absorb. Like a microscopic jungle, every creature here plays its role, ensuring a balance between life and decay. Larger inhabitants soon appear anthropods and earthworms, the giants of this hidden world. The journey begins as the earthworm moves through the soil, consuming organic matter like fallen leaves, decaying roots, and even the tiniest particles of dead plants. Its body, a marvel of simplicity and efficiency, processes this matter with astonishing precision. Inside the worm's gut, a symphony of microorganisms takes center stage. Bacteria, fungi, and enzymes break down the organic matter into its simplest components. It also uses rock that has been broken down into grit by weather, time, and even those little bacteria and fungi. The worm's gizzard uses grit to grind the matter and aid in digestion. As the material passes through the worm's intestines, nutrients are concentrated and chemically transformed into forms that the plant can readily absorb. When the worm finally expels this processed matter, it emerges as castings, tiny dark pellets that are in essence nature's finest fertilizer. Rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and a host of micronutrients, these castings provide plants with a perfectly balanced diet. But the magic of the worm castings doesn't stop with nutrients. They also contain beneficial microbes that help protect the plant from disease and improve the soil structure, enhancing its ability to retain water and air. As the earthworm burrows, it does more than just recycle organic matter. Its tunnels aerate the soil, creating passageways for water, roots, and other organisms to thrive. They tunnel through it like miners, mixing organic matter and microorganisms in their wake. Their work creates a perfect environment for the plants to anchor their roots, ensuring that they have access to water, oxygen, and nutrients. In this way, the earthworm shapes the very foundation of the ecosystems above. This unassuming creature, tirelessly at work in the dark, is just one of the many characters that play a pivotal role in sustaining life. Its castings are a gift to the plants that feed us, a silent but vital contribution to the cycle of growth and renewal. And this system is not a random assembly of life, but rather a highly organized web where every organism is linked in a chain of mutual benefit. Plants, too, are an active participant. Through their roots, they release exudates, sugars and other compounds that attract specific microbes. In return, these microbes protect the plants from disease and deliver nutrients in an exquisite dance of reciprocity. And so the soil food web stands as a quiet yet profound reminder. Beneath the chaos of the surface world lies an intricate balance. It is not alive, 
It is a hidden symphony of life, endlessly cycling nutrients, energy, and vitality, all in service of the living world above. In the grand theater of life, few performers are as vital or unassuming as the plants that carpet our world. They stand as silent alchemists, drawing what they need from the earth and the sky to create the very essence of life for countless species, including our own. It begins in the soil, a vast reservoir of hidden treasures. Through their roots, plants reach into the earth, searching for the elements they require. Tiny hair-like extensions on the roots secrete compounds that entice microorganisms that have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium to do a trade, if you will. These molecules are absorbed through specialized channels and transported into the plant's vascular system. But the magic doesn't stop there. Above ground, plants perform one of nature's most astonishing feats, photosynthesis. Using the energy of sunlight, they transform carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil into glucose, the foundation building block of all their growth. This process releases oxygen, a gift to all breathing creatures, like us. As plants grow, their biochemistry becomes even more remarkable. They take the nutrients absorbed from the soil and combine them with glucose to create an astonishing array of compounds. Vitamins like vitamin C, minerals like iron and magnesium, and macronutrients such as carbohydrates and proteins. These substances will later nourish herbivores that graze upon the plants and ultimately the humans who depend on them for survival. Consider a humble leaf of spinach. Within its tender green structure lies a wealth of iron, calcium, and folate all synthesized through this elegant process. The minerals it drew from the soil now fortify our bones and blood. The energy it captured from the sunlight sustains our cells. Even the smallest sprout carries the legacy of this ancient partnership between plant and planet. This quiet, unending cycle is a profound symbiotic relationship. The earth provides the raw materials, the sun powers the transformation, and the plants create the nutrients that form the foundation of the food web. And in this interplay, humans find their lifeline, a connection to the soil, the sun, and the intricate dance of nature's chemistry. In the grand scheme of things, all of this happens to break down the environment into things the plant needs to live and thrive. Plants cannot extract nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and other macro and micronutrients from the original sources. The players in the soil food web break it down and deliver it to the plant. All hydroponics is doing is providing the plants with these macro and micronutrients in a liquid that the plant's roots can absorb. Then, through photosynthesis, the plants create what we need. If it occurred the way some imagine, then instead of NPK, we would be sprinkling our gardens with multivitamins. In simple terms, the soil is not creating nutrients for us. It is creating it for the plants who in turn make the life-giving vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins that animals and humans need. So the next time you sit down to a meal, remember the remarkable journey each bite has taken. From soil to root, from leaf to light, plants stand as a quiet custodians of life itself. Not because they were raised on a living soil, but rather because they were part of a soil that was teeming with an infinite universe of life. Live to inspire, keep on growing, and be the change. Catch you next time.